BBC Television presents... Hancock. The British National Health Service, a central pillar of the post-war welfare state, was a revolutionary social advance. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I've come in answer to your advert on the wall next to the Eagle Laundry in Pelham Road. <laughs> in the last 30 years, a secret and incremental plan of destruction of the nation's proudest achievement has unfolded. An advert? Yes, on your, the road. Po your poster. You must have seen it. There's a nurse uh, pointing at you, know. I believe she's a Red Cross lady, actually, with a moustache and a beard. <laughs> monumental portrayal of the public interest. Penciled in, of course. <laughs> you must know it, it's one of yours, definitely one of yours, next to Hands Off Cuba, just above the cricket stuff. <laughs> it says, your blood can save a life. Oh, I see you wish to become a blood donor. I certainly do, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Something for the benefit of the country as a whole. What should it be, I thought? Become a blood donor or join the Young Conservatives? <laughs> Even in those days, we were careful about resources, and the sister was in charge. She had her own stock room. She ordered what she wanted. She kept a check of it. None of this was done by administration or managers or telling what to do. Um, the linen was um, went to the laundry on site. We had the linen delivered back to the, la the laundry room. So many of these things were in the hands of the sister. She was in charge, and, she, and these were her patients. You could get people to work well over the hours they were being paid because they knew they were part of something that was good. I mean, I don't think that was completely deliberate, but in hindsight... Doc, Anthony Hancock, twice candidate for the county council elections, defeated. <laughs> <laughs> Onsec British Legion, Earl's Court Branch, Treasurer of the Darts Team and the Outings Committee. <laughs> An income stream guaranteed by government. Where else can you find another business opportunity like it? PFI has been a scam. It's a bit like being forced to sell your own house, move into an overpriced hotel, and having to pay for everything on a credit card. The adoption of PFI planted debt time bombs across the NHS. The national network of hospitals started to be broken up into foundation trusts. Public bodies are backed by the taxpayer and cannot go bankrupt. So it was necessary in 2006 to introduce new insolvency regulations, setting hospitals up for asset stripping. The Trust Special Administrator was created in 2009 and was deployed for the first time in 2012, just as the growing PFI burden caused South London Healthcare Trust to flounder as intended, so its assets could then be sold off. Nationality? Ah, you've got nothing to worry about there. It's the blood you're thinking about, isn't it? <laughs> British! British! Undiluted for 12 generations! 100% Anglo-Saxon with perhaps just a dash of Viking. <laughs> nothing else has crept in, no? Anybody who gets any of this will have nothing to complain about. There's aristocracy in there, you know? You want to watch who you're giving it to. <laughs> This is the story of the great NHS heist. The, the country was exhausted after the war financially. It's like motor oil, it doesn't mix if you get my name. <laughs> Mr. Hancock, when a blood transfusion is being given, the family background is of no consequence. Oh, come now, surely you don't expect me to believe that. I mean, after all, East is East, really. And blood is blood all over the world, Mr. Hancock. It is classified by groups and not by accidents of birth. I did not come here for a lecture on communism, young lady. <laughs> it is functional for many millions of Americans. The American healthcare system is made up of insurance companies, hospital provider chains, drug and medical appliance companies, and the government. The profit motive is the driving force, and for insurers, money can be made by the denial of care and high out-of-pocket expenses before insurance claims can be made. Hospital providers inflate charges and carry out unnecessary tests and treatments, then bill the patients, insurers, or the government. Drug and appliance manufacturers push up their prices, heavily market and exaggerate the benefits of their products. 
Some of those excluded by privatized healthcare are supported by government funding, Medicare for the elderly, and Medicaid for the poor and the young. But government funding mostly goes to private providers and insurers. The literature is, uh, is quite large and quite compelling that uh, if you, people have to take money out of their pocket to see a doctor, they'll do it much less often. They'll see the doctor much less often, even if... <laughs> I happen to be a conservative. Then kindly behave like one, madam. <laughs> He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. That's right. Hey, actually, that's right. Hold on, hold on. Hang on a second. What I want to do... Take that back. Take that back. Now, well, why don't you just sort this out? Hang on. I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. Oh, sorry. He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. That's right. Hang on. Actually, that's right. Hold on, hold on. What I want to do... Take that back. Take that back. Take that back. Now, well, why don't you just sort this out? Hang on. In for it. What do you want? Money? Don't be vulgar. <laughs> Great believer in charity. Help others. That's my motto. I contribute to every flag day that's going. Now, the pals of my suits are always the first thing to go. <laughs> Covered in holes, they are. <laughs> Yes, I always give what I can. Here, have a look at this. Look, look at this. It's all down here in my diary. Congo relief, two and six. Self denial week, one and eight. <laughs> Lifeboat day, a tanner. <laughs> Arab beer refugees, one and two. Yes, it's all down here. Yes. Yes, I do what I can. My conscience is clear. And when I'm finally called by the great architect, and they say, "What did you do?" I shall just bring me book out, and I shall say, "Here." I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. We're going to do such morally repugnant things. Keep in mind that a medical director is just as much of a corporate employee as I was. And we're always made aware, we're constantly made aware of the need to make sure that our investors were happy you want to make sure that you get a bonus. You want to make sure that you get a raise. Uh, and uh, you know that the chances of your getting a bonus or a raise are enhanced if you help the company achieve earnings goals. There is one group of people who do extremely well out of the American healthcare system. In 2016 alone, the top six health insurance company chief executive officers each earned upwards of $17 million. Former United Health Group CEO Dr. Bill McGuire received an outgoing compensation package worth in excess of one billion dollars. Death panels actually do exist in this country. They exist within private insurance companies. Uh, the insurance uh, company employees have the power over, over life and death. And in fact, the American system, taxpayers pay more per head for health care uh, than we do in this country, despite the fact that they're also paying for private care. Uh, in a sense, there's a certain generosity in the American system. People are paying double. It is a certain stupidity as well, because what they're paying for is wasted and goes into profit. When Michael Moore decided to make a movie on the health care industry. One of my responsibilities uh, was to ultimately discredit Michael Moore as a filmmaker and, and the film itself. The intent is to maximize profits. You denied more people health care, you got a bonus. When you don't spend money on somebody, it's a savings to the company. But as I watched the film, I, I was really uh, affected by it. Uh, I could tell that he, he, he did the film very carefully. Uh, I, I saw no, no inaccuracies. Yes, he had an agenda, certainly. Uh, but uh, uh, his depiction of how health insurance companies operated uh, was dead on. Back home from Philadelphia to, to visit family in Tennessee, and I just picked up a, a, a newspaper uh, and read about something called a health care expedition that was being held close to where I grew up in Wise County, Virginia, across the state line a few miles. I'd never heard of the organization 
remote area medical that was putting this on. When I went to that fair, I, I saw um, the real consequences of the actions and the practices of... He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. Right. I, 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 that's right. Actually, that's right. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to say, what I want to do... Take that back. Take that back. No, well, why don't you just sort this out? I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. Oh, sorry. He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. Right. I, I, actually, that's right. Hold on, hold on. What I want to do... Take that back. Take that back. Well, why don't you just sort this out? I'm not exaggerating it, am I? The knock on her was just... It was just awful. Last year, I was um, shooting my a movie, Where to Invade Next, and we went to this country, um, Estonia. I wanted to go there because I was trying to show in different countries, what they do better than us, and what can we learn from them. And so I went to Estonia because there, but the World Health Organization says that you have the least chance as a woman dying in childbirth in Estonia than any other country on the planet. If you live in Cleveland, you have a three times greater chance of dying in childbirth than you do in, Cle than you do in Estonia. And so they took me to the maternity ward, and they had the head doctor of the, the maternity ward, and uh, he's showing me around, and he's telling me why they're so good at this. We're walking down this hallway, and there's a picture on the wall. And I stopped him, and I said, wait a minute, I know the person in that photo. <laughs> That's me and the doctor there in the hallway. And can we just punch in, punch in a little bit on this uh, here? It's Hillary Clinton shaking this guy's hand. I said, where, was it? where did this happen? He said, it happened right to where you're standing. <laughs> I said, oh my god, well, who's the guy? That is me, 20 years ago. I said, oh my god. So, okay, well, so what was she doing in Estonia? Well, don't you remember? She wanted you to have universal health care. So she was studying. She went around the world to study it. And she came to little Estonia for the same reason you're here tonight, to find out why so many more women survive childbirth here than in the United States. And I said, oh, my God, wow, she came here? Yes. And then she went back, and you didn't listen to her. Instead, you humiliated her and attacked her. And you've gone 20 years now without universal health care. And we've had it. I said, um, I made this movie, Sicko. And while making the movie, I learned that According to the Congressional Budget Office, nearly 50,000 Americans die each year for one simple reason. They don't have health insurance or they don't have adequate health insurance. In other words, not because of the disease, not because of the germs in the hospital, but because they didn't have health insurance, they put off going to the doctor, or they had crappy health insurance and the doctor couldn't send them to the specialist that he wanted to send them to, so they died. They died only because they were Americans. If they lived across the river from Detroit, in Windsor, Canada, they'd be alive. But because they were American, they died. 50,000 a year. And I sat there and I started doing the math of this. Like 50, 20 years, 50,000 people dead. Holy shit. This is like a million people. That's a million of our fellow Americans dead because they didn't have health insurance. <laughs> if they'd been Canadian, or French, or Scottish, or Chilean, or just about anywhere else in the world, they would have lived. Every 9-11, we have somber vigils and memorials for the 3,000 Americans who died in that attack, as we should. 3,000. We, I still tear up over it. One of my producers was on the plane from Boston that went in the North, North Tower. We shed no tears for the million Americans who have died from that act of terrorism. One million dead Americans because we refused to listen to Hillary Clinton. Set up, which is in 
intended to make sure that people who are seriously ill don't go anywhere near trying to get care from insurance companies. The American health insurers are already here. Since 2003, United Health Group, and through its subsidiary Optum, has been awarded NHS contracts across England to provide prescribing decision support software, management of GP referrals to hospitals, and crucially, to implement policy to redesign the NHS. United Health Optum is ideally positioned to capture control of NHS budgets allocated to GPs via their registered patient lists. Most doctors remain unaware of the privatization plan for the NHS, which remarkably is fully endorsed by the British Medical Association. Stephen's NHS long-term plan will complete the transition to the American system, introducing financial incentives to deny patients care through a shared savings scheme copying United Health's own shared savings program. Many of the changes that this plan sets out are already happening somewhere in the NHS, and now they need to happen everywhere across the NHS. All of the incentives are for less medical care because the people can see the less care they give up, the more money they make. What work have you done that will ensure that that work is continued to really be done by the NHS? We... Or is NHS just going to become a badge? No. We are suggesting that the integrated care should be public providers. I, I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. <laughs> Drink a pint of milk a day. Drink a pint of milk a day. <laughs> Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. Drop the jug in your handkerchief. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. We will all have the riches. And I have another yacht in the Mediterranean, if you don't mind. It's a tragedy, but it's a tragedy. Oh, sorry. He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. That's right. I'm, actually, I'm, 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 Oh, sorry. He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. That's right. I'm, actually, I'm, 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 I'm very lucky. What I want to do, take that for back. Back. Take no, it back. No, well, why don't you just sort this out? Sorry, I'm a bit lonely now. Funny the things you do on your own, isn't it? <laughs> yes. This, uh, normal sort of day for you, then? <laughs> Same amount of people as normally? Or, uh, is it about normal? <laughs> it's about average. Yes, yes, quite. Yes, indeed, my word, yes. Of course, it's a vocation, nurse, and I've always said that. One of the highest callings a woman can aspire to. It's not the money, is it? <laughs> Strange, isn't it, the different values we place in society? I mean, you take modelling. You get some skinny bird up in the West End, <laughs> all bones and salt cellars, dragging a piece of fur along a platform, <laughs> 50 quid a week. <laughs> and there's you lot, dedicated, three years training, humping great jolly loads of mints about all day long. <laughs> Not right, there's Adam Faith earning ten times as much as the Prime Minister. Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> Mine. I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? 
There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. Now, this won't hurt. You will just feel a slight prick on the end of your thumb. <laughs> well, I'll bid you good day then. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you want any more, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. <laughs> Where are you going? Have me tea and biscuits. <laughs> I thought you came here to give us some of your blood. Well, you've just had it. <laughs> That's just a smear. It may be just a smear to you, mate, but it's life and death to some point. <laughs> I've just taken a sample to test. A sample? How much do you want, then? Well, a pint, of course. A pint? Are you going raving mad? <laughs> you must be joking. A pint is a perfectly normal quantity to take. You don't seriously expect me to believe that. I mean, I came in here in all good faith to help me country. I don't mind giving a reasonable amount, but a pint? That's very nearly an armful. <laughs> I don't mind that much, but I'm not having enough. I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. To hear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not walking around with an empty arm for anybody. <laughs> After all, a joke's a joke and all that. Uh, Mr Hancock, you obviously don't know very much about the workings of the human body. You won't have an empty arm or an empty anything. <laughs> blood is circulating all the time. A perfectly normal, healthy individual can give a pint of blood without any ill effects whatsoever. After all, you do have eight pints of blood, you know. Now, look, chum, everybody do his own trade, I'll grant you. <laughs> but if I've got eight pints, obviously I need eight pints. <laughs> and not seven, as I will have by the time you finish with me. <laughs> No, no, I'm sorry. I've been misinformed. I've made a mistake. I'll do something else. I think I'll be a traffic warden. <laughs> I can't force okay. you to donate your blood, but it's a great shame. You're AB negative. <laughs> Is that bad? <laughs> I don't know. You're rhesus positive. Rhesus? They're monkeys, aren't they? Aren't they? <laughs> what are you implying? I didn't come here to be insulted by a legalised vampire. <laughs> Mr. Hancock, that is your blood group, AB negative. One of the rarest blood groups there is. Really? Yes, it is. <laughs> Very rare indeed. Oh, well, of course, this does throw a different complexion on the matter. I mean, if I am one of the few sources, one doesn't like to hog it all, so to speak. <laughs> Not unchristian. Very rare, eh? Yes. There'll be no ill effects, I assure you. You'll make up the deficiency in no time at all. Oh, well, in that case, I'll do it. I mean, after all, we AB negatives must stick together. <laughs> minority group like us, we could easily be persecuted. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Hancock. I'm very grateful to you. Now, if you'll just take off your coat and lie down over there, it won't take long. Just rest for half a... Didn't take the piss. Oh, fuck off. Are you starting, Lake? Why would I put a stone on a puff like you? Don't call me a fucking puff. Because it looks as though we have well, I want to... You might. Yeah, just like the one you were asking. Yeah. Stop being so rude. Oh, sorry. He's never used a food bank. He's never been to a food that's bank. That's right. Hang on a second. What I want to do... Take that back. Take that back. Now, well, why don't you just sort this out? Hang on a second. Why don't you take it back? I just want to hear... I want to hear from... Let's hear from Jeremy Corbyn. This is what he had to say about that nuclear deterrent. Oh, what lads, to say check me about that box or not, terror. wench. I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. No, nothing to it. What group are you? Group B. What group are you? A, B negative. <laughs> That's very rare. I know. It's a funny thing, this blood business. Yes, I suppose it is. It all looks the same, and yet it's all different. 
Yes, it's very funny stuff, blood. Oh. I don't know where we'd be without it. <laughs> that's true, that's very true. Where would we be without it? Yes, it's very important, blood. Circulates right round the body, you know. <laughs> yes, I believe. I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. Hello, Doctor. And uh, I'm operating on you tomorrow morning, aren't I? Good. What, what do you do for a living, Mr. Baker? I am a baker. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's, we're, all, we're all named after our jobs, aren't we? Yes. You'll be Mr. Doctor, then. <laughs> no such luck, I'm afraid. Uh, my name is Mr. Barber. How do you do? <laughs> Uh, the doctoring's just the sideline. I had a few hours spare a week, and I've got all the sharp things, so it seemed logical. <laughs> so, after the operation, I can give you a bit of a trim, if you like. Goaties are back in. Oh, no, thank you, uh, Barber. Well, if you change your mind, just yell. You come to think of it, you'll probably be yelling anyway. So <laughs> well, I just wanted a little chat. Put your mind at rest. Make sure you know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to die, aren't I? We're all going to die, Mr. Baker. <laughs> Obviously, some of us a lot sooner and in considerably more agony than others. <laughs> but in the end, it's the hot fires of hell for all of us, isn't it? Sorry, where was I? Oh, yes, um, putting your mind at rest. Well, I've had a look at your chart, and things aren't as bad as they might be. No? No, because the moon is in Jupiter, which is a good thing. <laughs> Now, I understand you've been suffering from persistent headaches. So what we're going to do tomorrow is simply cut a large hole in the top of your head with a, a saw-type thing, and then flip out the disc of bone with a little jemmy, and uh, simply let the headaches out. <laughs> and that's your treatment for headaches, is that you're going to cut off the top of my head? Oh, good heavens, no. What do you think is this? The Dark Ages? <laughs> I, shall, I shall then apply a warmed Quicksilver brain balm. Meaning? I'm going to pour hot mercury into the hole in your <laughs> Give it a bit of a stir with my brain spoon here. <laughs> and tide you up, seal up the hole with some tar, and Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Any questions? Well, it hurt. <laughs> Oh, I thought so, yes, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, having the top of your head cut off bound to cause a bit of jip, isn't it? <laughs> I'd expect you to feel a little bit of discomfort in the early stages. Right. <laughs> followed by blinding agony shortly after. <laughs> Good! Well, that's the spirit. And don't worry, it really is a very routine procedure. And it works. Well, let's not confuse routine with success. <laughs> But I'd say we'll have you out of here in three days. Three days? That'll be brilliant. Well, it'll most likely be the hemorrhaging and the gangrene, actually. But... <laughs> See you tomorrow. Plug in, turn on, and cop out. <laughs> you will not be able to lose yourself on stag and skip out for beer during commercials because... And the revolution will not be televised. <laughs> Nobody knew any aches or pains in you? <laughs> no, no, I'm all right. Well, that's the main thing, isn't it? As long as you've got your health. Nothing else matters, really, does it? No, and the funny thing is, you know, you never appreciate it till you haven't got it anymore. <laughs> Some people take the health for granted, don't they? Do you know? That could have been... I'm just going to be much more concrete, right? There's no privatisation of the NHS on my watch, and the integrated care contracts will go to public sector bodies to deliver the NHS in public hands. better off. Well, that didn't work, did it? Leaders from all three main parties have, over the last 30 years, been enabling the corporate capture of the NHS whilst claiming to support it. The destruction of the nation's finest achievement is the greatest betrayal of the public. Hello, Doctor. Hancock here. Yes, it is me again. <laughs> Has it gone yet? 
I said, have you used it? Me blood. <laughs> well, you've had it 24 hours now. You said it was rare. Surely somebody must be after it. Well, of course it's got something to do with me. It's my blood. Well, all right, it was. You can't expect my interest in it to cease just because you've got it. This is the story of the great NHS heist. The, the country was exhausted after the war financially. <laughs> Knife wound, eh? Teddy Boise? No, don't <laughs> Lady found him, cut himself on a bread knife and fainted. Mm. Lost a lot of blood, I see. Yes. Well, we'll have to give him a transfusion. He had his blood donor's card on him. He's group AB negative. Really? It's very rare. Have we got any? Well, I've checked and we've got just one pint in stock. <laughs> Get it, nurse, will you? Have you got me mixed? Thank <laughs> you.